All right, so this week we're going to be tying up the meat whistle. It's a fly by John Barr. Today we're going to tie it on a A-Rex PR374 90 degree jig streamer hook in a size one. And we're going to be using this uh, Pro Sport Fisher, let's see where it's at, uh, Flexi Bead in Gunsmoke Metal, size small. So that's the finished fly. Pop that guy out. We're going to be tying today with Vivas Six Odd, just kind of a rusty brown color. Get our A-Rex hook and our Pro Sport Fisher bead and just kind of thread it on there. Make a thread base. You want all your flies to last, so just and just each little step, I'll throw a little zap a gap on there, something like that. There we go. And we're gonna be tying in some wiggle legs, uh, black and blue. Tie the black side in on the bottom right here. That little touch of zap a gap too helps, um, helps these legs, well, never mind, I was gonna say, usually it helps them from not rolling or stops him from rolling around the hook like that. Just gotta shift him a little bit. Wrap it back to about the point of the hook. Cut that excess off. We want. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I heard somebody say, I think it was Kelly Gallup, that when crawdads molt and they're super vulnerable, their uh, their craws are blue. So that's just kind of like a hot spot back there. Then we're going to grab our, it's a micro rabbit and a crawfish orange color, this guy. I'm going to pierce it right through the hide. You don't want to have too long of a tail back there, but it's just kind of personal preference. R really long tails will foul a lot more. Um, so just pierce it right there. They use coral braid or something similar in the original pattern. I'm just using some ice dub UV hot orange. Gonna dub it on the thread there and just walk that forward. Not all the way to the, the bead there. We want to leave some room because we're going to tie some other materials in. So, you know, give yourself about a, another bead's width uh, distance when you stop there. We're just going to tie this Wrap it in. If you separate the fur from the hide, you get a better tie-in point. A couple in front, and then a couple more over the back. Helps just kind of lock that in. Snip it. Here's a little trick you can do if you don't want to get your brush in all that all that rabbit or any other materials, just get your brushable um, zap a gap and just put it on your thread right there a little bit. Just a little touch of that stuff really helps and kind of pull that back and then when you wrap your thread on, obviously you're getting it right where you want it. So that guy's there. Then we're gonna take some of this Marabou from Hairline, uh, a burnt orange of a cool color. Um, you don't need a real big wispy one. Actually the shorter ones are uh, better for this application. And we're just gonna, we're gonna take some of this lower feathers off. Kind of slick it back and we're just tying in just a little kind of chunk right there on the sides just to give this body some, some width, some mass up here. Grab another one and tie it on the other side. Same exact thing. Kind of slick it. Trim that excess as close as you can. It's kind of difficult with that bead right there, but do what you can. A little bit of flashaboo, some copper. 
it's like maybe three or four pieces. Not real long, just goes back to basically the uh, the bend of the hook. I don't want it fouling around the tail and everything else back there. So just a couple pieces there, that's good. And then last but not least, uh, the Schloppen, again from Hairline. <clears throat> Kind of an interesting name, Fiery Brown. Don't really see the fiery in this one, but just a normal little feather there. And just like you'd finish basically any other fly with a schlopping collar. Peel some of it away. Separate it. So your, <clears throat> so your feather looks like so. Tie that guy in right there. Oops. And just brush those fibers back while you kind of palm it forward. Looks good. do here is that same technique kind of brush some zap a gap on that thread there we go give it a few turn whip finish there So then what you want to do is grab that bead and kind of push it right up against all those fibers and start your thread in front of it. And just build a little thread dam here to kind of hold that, that bead up against those fibers. So just wrapping from left to right with a lot more wraps closer to the bead, just kind of building up that cone shape. And when you get it right, you'll kind of feel it tighten up. Like you'll feel the thread kind of advancing and jumping over the top of that cone. And then all of a sudden it will stop doing that and everything kind of gets tight. And you know that it's right up against there. And then for this guy, I like to utilize the uh, Pro Sport Fisher UV Cure. Let's get some on there. Pretty good amount. Just get it all up in there. Cover that whole thread. And then just hit it with your UV light. It's pretty nice. It cures clear and it just kind of looks like an extension of that uh, bead. Fortunately, I got some zappa gap on my bead, so it's not the prettiest finish fly I've ever done. But it will fish nonetheless. And that's it. Pretty easy, pretty simple, quick little tie. Um, it's got some good action. It's got a jig hook like that. Uh, nice weight to it. Just a little simple crawdad streamer pattern. Works for trout, works for smallmouth bass. You know, carp would probably even eat that right place, right time. Yep, that's it. John Barr's Meat Whistle.